one major theme in the history of American education is a back and forth between two values, equality and excellence. In this series, we'll go back to the founding of the U.S. common schools and work our way through various flashpoints in history to try to answer this question. Is there a trade-off between equality and excellence? The value of equality is baked into a democracy like ours in the United States, with our principles of equality before the law and one person, one vote. After all, our Declaration of Independence declared that all men are created equal. Public education, as we've discussed in other modules, originated as a system in many respects to preserve equality, to promote democratic virtue. As we've moved into the 20th century, equality in some respects has become even more important in comparison to European countries, which have robust welfare systems. By contrast, the U.S. has had components of the welfare state that originated in the New Deal and the Great Society, but the pressure has remained on schools as the focal point to create equal opportunity and social equality. So it should be no wonder that equality has been a major emphasis of education reform. We'll take a look at efforts to improve conditions for minority groups in the United States, most notably the African-American push to equalize black education. We'll take a look at efforts to expand education so that everyone has a chance to get a high school diploma or a college degree or a preschool education. And efforts to equalize education have also included those to eliminate the achievement gap or to equalize school funding so that no matter which district you live in, whether it's urban, rural, suburban, you have an equal opportunity chance at an education. Now, equality is all well and good, and we want everyone to pass their exams, but we also want those exams to mean something so that the educational bar is raised with each generation rather than lowering or stagnating. So excellence has also been a leading value in education reform, given urgency by the economic role that schools play in preparing the workforce and stimulating growth. This strand of reform gave us accrediting agencies, the Association of American Universities, the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching, and myriad Jeremiads about the failures of American education. Take, for instance, the National Commission on Excellence in Education, which in 1983 gave us the landmark report, A Nation at Risk. If an unfriendly foreign power had attempted to impose on America the mediocre educational performance that exists today, we might well have viewed it as an act of war. As it stands, we have allowed this to happen to ourselves. We have, in effect, been committing an act of unthinking, unilateral educational disarmament. Scary stuff. Improve or die, America. Almost every education reform outfit prioritizes either equality or excellence. Take, for instance, the Foundation for Excellence in Education, founded by former Florida Governor Jeb Bush. It has excellence in its name, but it pays lip service to equality, to equipping every child to achieve his or her God-given potential. Still, read the organization's agenda, and it's clear that the higher priority is using competition to improve the quality of education in order to compete economically against other countries. Do equality and excellence need to be opposed? It's an honest question we'll take on in this series. It certainly would be ideal if we could stitch one to the other. The long-standing push for national standards, currently we see embroiling with the Common Core controversy, is an attempt to have both, to set the bar high, excellence, and then make everyone jump over it, equality. This idea of setting high standards appeals to reformers generation after generation, and yet time and again, they fail to achieve this seemingly simple solution. This series will help us understand why.